and Life After California. Today we are leaving California for Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm pleased to introduce Haley Van Edem, who's a realtor there. Hello, Haley. Hi. It's great to meet you. Great to see you. Actually, you and I spent some time together earlier this year touring Knoxville, and I loved your town, loved the surrounding area. So I want to make sure people understand the benefits of moving to uh, Eastern Tennessee. So can you start just by telling us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, and uh, how long you've been in Knoxville? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's good to see you again too, Terry, and um, hopefully you can make a trip back out um, real soon with some more people from California. Um, but I grew up in Tennessee, um, a native Tennessean, originally from Middle Tennessee area near Cookville. I went to Tennessee Tech University. I went to college there. Um, actually from a very small town about 20 minutes north of Cookville, um, the little sleepy town of Livingston, Tennessee, and I played basketball there, lived there. My family's from there um, for several generations back, uh, but I moved to Knoxville and have been living here most of my adult life, and I, I love Knoxville. I have two young boys, and um, I'm married to a Belgian, so that's interesting. I've made him a Tennessee volunteer. Um, so my Tennessean with a Belgian accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and I've been, um, I've been in real estate for a bit now and I just love helping people find, find new homes and have a lot of out of state buyers, not just in California and love help people, love helping people move here because I love Tennessee so much. Well, in the early days of the Leaving California group, which I started almost uh, two years ago, a lot of people were looking at Idaho, Texas, Arizona, places like that. But I got to tell you, in the last six months or so, it seems like almost half the people in the group, which is uh, now approaching 30,000 people, about half of them, when they come into the group, say they're looking at Tennessee. Why do you think that is? Well, there's a lot of reasons why I think people would be moving to Tennessee. I think the first thing that comes to mind is cost of living. Um, most people know, and if you don't know, Tennessee does not have a state income tax. So that's very favorable reason why you would want to move to Tennessee. Um, the other reason, specifically Knoxville, the location of Knoxville, Knoxville is actually at the center of the eastern half of the United States and is within a one day's drive of three fourths of the US population. Um, yeah, so not only is Knoxville a great location to relocate to live, but it's also a great location for businesses and manufacturing companies um, to relocate to the area specifically for that reason. Um, other reasons are the recreational areas in Knoxville. You know, we're surrounded, I think we have, at least eight lakes within an hour's drive and four or five of them are around Knoxville specifically. We have the Smoky Mountains, so hiking is big here. Um, surrounding towns, that's within about a 30 minute drive of Knoxville, um, still have that small town feel. So I think that's another big pull on people moving to this area. So we have towns like Oak Ridge, Maryville, Lenore City, Loudoun. You know, these are smaller towns, uh, but you're still in Knoxville within a 30 minute drive. And those and towns, have, I assume uh, uh, pri uh, housing prices are lower and maybe you get more acreage for your money and maybe horse farms, things like that. Are those out there too? Oh yeah, absolutely. So these are places, you know, where you can really stretch your legs a bit. You know, you're going to find um, places with half acre or more, uh, an acre plus, even if you wanted what they call a gentleman's farm now, which could be five to 10 acres, you know, you're going to be able to find that. Um, $600,000 you could find, you know, five plus acres um, with a very beautiful home in some of these um, outlying areas of Knoxville. And when I'm saying outlying, I'm saying a 30 minute drive into Knoxville. So that's also a big pull and living on these lakes. I mean, you have an opportunity to have lake access, lake frontage, uh, properties for under a million dollars where you're hard pressed. And I think in California to find anything halfway decent <laughs> for under a million, but you could live right on the water with a boat ramp. Um, in your backyard for seven or eight hundred thousand dollars. 
Yeah, you took me to some of those lake homes. They are just amazing. And you get a dock and your bo boat is parked out there. And these are these lake levels are controlled, aren't they? So that you don't have to worry about the lake drying up, things like that. And they're huge too, right? Yeah, they're huge. Yeah. So the TVA does a really good job of controlling these levels of the lake. So in the wintertime, um, they will reduce the water level in the lake to account for the rain that we get in the winter and possibly snow. So you're you're not going to be flooded by it. You know, they go ahead and account for that then. And then in the spring, they start filling it back up again. And it's just a beautiful place to be. It, it really is. Um, and something else that's great here is our education. It's really world-class education, both um, from the high school level, grade school level, all the way up to the college level. You know, we got the University of Tennessee here in Knoxville, which has, you know, great engineering programs, teaching programs, nursing programs. Um, and I know you and I had talked a little bit about it before, uh, but... Tennessee also has some great incentives for high school graduates um, that graduated Tennessee High School. We have the Tennessee Hope Scholarship and also the Tennessee Promise Scholarship. Now, the Tennessee Hope Scholarship is what I went to college on, and it paid for about half of my college, and it's rewarded on keeping a good grade point average. I think it's a, a C average or above. Um, and it was great. It paid for about half of my college. Um, but then after I graduated, uh, the governor um, came up with the Tennessee Promise Scholarship. And the Tennessee Promise Scholarship is absolutely something that every Tennessee um, high schooler, I believe, should take advantage of. And what that is, is Tennessee will pay your first two years of community college or technical school um, after you graduate high school. So your first two years are 100% covered under that program. That's just amazing. And we also discussed what they have for um, uh, children prior to going to kindergarten. So can you talk about that a little bit, preschool? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, with the corona and what has happened with that, um, a lot of people are out of work or one parent's out of work. So it's hard to be able to provide and, and pay for child care expenses. But what I was telling you earlier is um, Tennessee, actually, I just got the email last night, Tennessee expanded their essential worker grant uh, to pay for daycare and child care expenses through December 31st. Um, so my children are going to daycare now um, on that Tennessee grant because their father is an essential worker um, at the Oak Ridge Lab. And so they are, they're getting their daycare paid for through December 31st. And, you know, I think that speaks to our state and how fiscally responsible we are. Um, this is a state with no state income tax that can afford not only in a time of crisis to make sure families get their um, daycare expenses paid for, covered, so one less thing they have to worry about, but we're also sending kids to college their first two years for free. And, um, I just, and this is a red state, so I mean, I think that is amazing. It's amazing. Well, I think part of that is your government doesn't waste their money on a lot of bureaucracy and regulation and, and um, a bloated government. I think that helps a lot. So you can actually serve the taxpayers instead of the taxpayers serving the government. Right. But, yeah. There's, there's something to be said about when you put your taxpayers and your citizens first. And um, I really feel like our governor, um, Governor Billy, tries to take care of uh, Tennesseans to make sure that they are put first, their interests are put first. That's a unique concept to those of us who live in California. Well, you, you mentioned taxes uh, briefly. So let's talk about uh, property taxes. You know, out here, uh, everybody brags, hey, we only pay 1%. Now, of course, in my area, there's lots of add-ons. I pay about 1.4% uh, of the assessed value but I think it's a, a significantly less in Tennessee. So can you give us some examples of maybe what property taxes and how they work in Tennessee? Yeah, so your, your property taxes here, specifically in Knoxville, they're going to be based on city property tax and county property tax. Um, for example, if you buy a home in the city of Knoxville, 
you are going to pay both city and county property tax. Um, I'll give you an example in a minute, but basically it breaks down to city property taxes are $2.46 per $100 assessed value. County taxes are $2.12 per $100 assessed value. Now this is tax assessed value. Um, but to make that um, a little bit more tangible, I pulled a home that is in the county. So you're not going to be paying city taxes, only county taxes. It's for sale for $379,000 right now, but the tax assessment on it is $282,000. Um, so your county taxes are going to be um, right at $1,500 a year. So, so $1,500 $1, for a $360,000 home? $379,000 home. And can you tell us about that home? Do you still have it pulled up? Can you tell us about what, how big of a home that is, how much land it has? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a three bedroom, two and a half bath home. Um, it has 3,000 square feet. It was built in 1998. Um, it's two and a half stories. It's all brick. Um, it's in a great school system. And um, let's see, it's got about a half an acre lot. 379 for a 3,000 square foot home on a half acre in a great school district. I mean, I'm sure, I guarantee you, there's lots of people who are paying rent that is double what the mortgage would be on that home on an FHA loan. And, and yeah. your taxes are, are, would you say $1,500 a year on that home? $1,500 a year. And let me mention, it's got a three car uh, garage and a, um, and a detached a garage, a two car garage. <laughs> so five car garage. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wonder why everybody's moving to Tennessee. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And they're, they're coming here by the droves and I love it and we'll take all of you. Good. Well, yeah, as, as long as we can keep it uh, where the taxpayer comes first, not the government. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's switch gears a little bit. You mentioned that you get a little snow there. Can you talk about the four seasons in Knoxville? I mean, out here we get two, we have two seasons. We have rainy season and we have the dry season. That's about it. So what do you, what do you get in Knoxville over the four seasons? Yeah, so the four seasons here, you know, in the springtime, we get, we get a beautiful spring. The spring here starts about Mar late March, mid-March, mid actually. Um, and the summer, you know, I will say our summers can get quite hot and quite humid, um, but it's beautiful here. We, you know, somebody had mentioned in the group that they see a lot of rain in Knoxville in the summer in the forecast. And, you know, if you look at our forecast in the summertime, you're – probably going to see rain every day, uh, but it's not like it's raining all day every day. These are afternoon showers that pop up about every day, which are absolutely welcomed because it waters my plants and it cools it down. So um, an afternoon shower is, it's welcome here anytime, but don't get afraid if you look at the forecast and you think it's always raining here in the summer. It's not always raining. It rains about once a day though. Um, but it, it pops up and goes away. Um, the fall is absolutely stunning in East Tennessee. East Tennessee has gorgeous change of leaves. Um, so you can go into the Smoky Mountains in the fall and it's just absolutely breathtaking. And not far from here, you can get on the Blue Ridge Parkway. And I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of the Blue Ridge Parkway in the fall, um, but it's an actual drive people take from all around the country um, in the fall because how beautiful the change of leaves are. And then our winters, you know, we don't have, have harsh winters. I'm not going to say we've never had some heavy snows, um, but for example, last winter we had, I think, two days of a dusting of snow and it was gone within hours. Um, but, you know, we can have some winters where, you know, we have a couple of days of snow and it sticks around a couple of days, um, but nothing ever too serious. And um, we do get some rain in the wintertime, though. So, yeah, but all four, all four seasons. That's great. Well, and, and the nice thing about it there is that you're green a lot of the year, too, right? I mean, you're, it's summertime it's because it's raining every day. You you're actually have green 
trees, you have green grass, you have everything's green. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I just got back from Scotland in February and I was amazed at how much the Scottish Highlands looked like Tennessee. And uh, it made me understand why Scotch Irish people settled in this part is they really felt like home, you know? Um, so the green that you can imagine Scotland is, I mean, Tennessee is just as green and uh, yeah, it's from the rain and the, the good weather that we have here, but we are very, very green. My husband, like I said, is Belgian. And the other day we were driving home. He said, it is so green here. <laughs> Everywhere you look, it's green. <laughs> Um, but it, it is, and it's beautiful. Well, and I will say, though, that one thing that comes up often when people talk about Tennessee is tornadoes. And, of course, I say it on every video, but we live in earthquake country where at any moment half of this state could fall into the ocean. And that doesn't seem to bother people too much, even though you never see it coming. But you do get tornadoes in Tennessee. I don't know about your area, but can you kind of walk us through or tell us about tornadoes and if you get them and how often and things like that yeah so here in east tennessee um tornadoes are not extremely common um since 1953 knoxville has only had 16 tornadoes in total and um, that's since 1953 um there was two fatalities and 32 injuries in total since 1953 um now, I think that is mostly due to the topography here. So you're protected by the mountains on all sides. So when weather comes east to west, unless it comes from the south, which sometimes it can, but most of the time it comes east to west. Once it hits the Cumberland Plateau and makes its way in to East Tennessee, it usually dissipates there. And we're protected by that. So we're kind of in a valley here and we are protected by these mountains on all sides of us. Um, but I, like I said before, I am from the Cookville area and we know that they had the devastating tornadoes there. Um, but East Tennessee and Middle Tennessee is extremely different in, um, in the possibility of having a deadly tornado. Well, thank you for that. Well, let's turn our attention to population now. Can you just talk, talk about, um, you know, the county population and, and Knoxville population? Yep, so in Knox County, we have about 470,000 inhabitants, and then in Knoxville, we have about 190,000 inhabitants. Wow, that's half the population of the county I live in, which isn't that populated, so that's, you've got, and you've got plenty of room to grow, right? I mean, there's, there's plenty of room for development and uh, homes. Obviously, we don't want to have an exploding area like uh, Los Angeles, but you've got room to grow with plenty of infrastructure, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's homes being built all around, um, but plenty of land still left to be developed. Um, and if you're looking to come here and maybe you want to build here, um, there's plenty of lots for sale. And um, I will say builders are kind of backed up right now because we have so many people moving into the area, but plenty of space left. All right. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Thank you.